So here, um, let me start by identifying all the forces. So as you are applying this force F, the one force that's a given, um, what you want to analyze this as a, as a uh, quasi-static equilibrium. So you are considering the moment just before when force F is large enough to cause it to start, cause it to start to move. So the moment before that, it's at static equilibrium. So that's how, even though I'm trying to describe something that's moving, I'll treat this like a static equilibrium. So I have this applied force and I'm gonna have gravity to deal with. Let's say gravity is acting at the center of mass, mg. Now, when you look at these two forces, the, um, the net force doesn't appear to be zero. So there must be one more net force, uh, one more force that causes net force to be equal to zero. That's going to be force that acts on this point. Let me call that F, uh, well, uh, actually let me call that normal force because it is a form of normal force. And um, it kind of has, um, yeah, there's that normal force. Um, and oh, I guess actually there's two normal forces. So, so let me actually call this N2. So I'm imagining the case where the applied force is zero. If your applied force is zero, then there might be another normal force that's uh, coming from this bottom point of contact. Now, this is what I want you to imagine. As you apply this force, the moment before the wheel goes over, what would happen with this bottom normal force? It would go to zero because it's about to lose contact. So for the situation that we are interested in, this particular normal force will go away and we will still have this normal force remaining, hopefully in the, say, in the correct magnitude and direction to make the net force zero. And um, so I guess with all that, what I'm trying to say is that this force is going to ensure that net force is equal to zero. If we were asked about this force, we might use this condition to look for what it is. But for the rest of this question, I'm really just going to fo focus on the net torque is equal to zero condition because the, um, um, because the, that's the condition that will relate to these two forces. So I hope all this discussion sets you up for setting the axis of rotation at the point that I'm going to set it at. I am going to set it at, at this point of contact. This simplifies my problem because basically it separates whatever uh, force N2 is from the, the net torque that it'll be, uh, from the torque that it'll be generating. It generates zero torque, whatever it is. So I only have to about torque to, to the apply the force. That's going to be this lever arm. Um, let me call that R1, times the force F. And um, that clockwise torque should be balanced up by torque due to weight, which will be this lever arm, let me call that R2, times the weight, uh, which will be generating counterclockwise torque. So um, that's the equation uh, R1 times F, is equal to R2 times mg. And really the heavy work here is figuring out R1 and R2. So let me draw a nice big figure to try to figure that out. So here's a, the part of the wheel. And um, well, this is my R. Let me draw the radius R in two different places. So here's the uh, here's the step size, H, and that's the point of contact. So, um, so yeah, the lever arm for uh, gravity, that's going to be, oh, uh, that's going to be easy. So that's this distance, that's R minus H, that's my R1, lever arm for gravity. Oh, I know what takes more work. It's the lever arm for Sorry, lever arm for gravity. This R1 is the lever arm for the applied force. 
and that's easy because with these vertical distances, I have R minus H giving me R1. That's the level arm for applied force F. I'm done. Level arm for gravity takes a little more work because um, I need to figure out this distance, which is going to be, um, well, uh, I think I need to draw this right triangle. So it's going to be this leg here. And that's going to be the that leg of uh, right triangle, which has one leg as R minus H. And hypotenuse as R. So this side should be, um, well, um, let me call that X. Um, so X squared plus R minus H squared is equal to R squared. And when you work out this algebra, it becomes, it's a lot, uh, it's simpler than you, I might be afraid that it is. So it's X squared plus, let me expand this out, R squared minus 2R H plus H squared is equal to R squared. So you see that R squared cancel out and um, you can get a reasonably simple expression for X which is a square root of 2RH minus H squared. So that's the, um, uh, that's the level arm for gravity or R2. So solving for F here, you get F is equal to MG. That's kind of constant thing in all the answers times. And this is the ratio square root of 2RH minus H squared over um, R minus H. And I think if you factor out one factor of H, then you can, um, so this is square root of this thing squared. Um, you can cancel out one factor of R minus H. So you get MG times square root of uh, Wait, is that it? Mm. Hmm. It's possible I made a mistake in this solution. Because I think if you factor out a one factor of H, it's uh, H times 2R minus H. I don't think that can be canceled out the way it's, I, I did a cancellation. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, so, so I think the correct answer is just gonna be, oh wow, well, no one pointed out that right yeah huh well um I need to double check but I'm pretty sure uh, yeah that's a mistake <laughs> <laughs> so well here the uh, answer at least the one that I think it is correct now is just uh, um, there's no simplifying this then it's just gonna be 2h times r I'm making the same mistake here. Yeah. Um, there's no simplifying this. It's just going to be um, H times 2R minus H divided by R minus H squared. And the whole thing square root it if you want. But it won't simplify the way I wanted it to. So, um, so um, but this is a kind of uh, static equilibrium analysis question that I uh, want you to be able to do uh, correctly. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure in the process of writing a solution, I did uh, write it all up. And the R perpendicular is R squared minus R minus H squared. Yeah, okay, I made an algebra mistake at this last step um, and didn't realize that no one pointed it out. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so you know, you should be able to go through the calculation.